Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Are you a Bible believer? We're going to continue this series. If you didn't watch the intro, please watch the intro. And if you didn't watch the one about church age versus the time of the Gentiles, I really encourage you, brothers and sisters in Christ, to go watch that one. But today we're going to be talking about the Great Tribulation or the time of Jacob's trouble. And we're going to explain why they call it the Great Tribulation and that uh, there's always a hidden agenda. Some people will say, well, it's not that big of a deal. Great Tribulation, uh, the time of Jacob's trouble. I know brethren that believe that the body of Christ does not go into the time of Jacob's trouble, but they still have no problem calling it the Great Tribulation. The whole point of these studies is, is are you a Bible believer? God said it a certain way. Are you, trying, are you infected with that disease of, yea, hath God said, a better rendering would be? Okay? God said it right at the time of Jacob's trouble, but uh, we can improve on it. We can say it better. Okay? We're just helping God out like, he, like God made a mistake. And every time someone says something like a title, a name, a description that's not in the Bible, they're saying that. They're saying they know better than God does. They're smarter than God. And they might not believe that, They'll say, well, no, no, this book is perfect from cover to cover, and, and it's without error, and we're not supposed to add to it, we're not supposed to subtract from it, and yet they add to it and subtract from it all the time. And I've caught Peter Ruckman doing it, Brian Denlinger doing it, I've been caught doing it, um, Sam Gipp is, is doing it a lot, uh, David Daniels is doing it a lot, okay, 33rd book. He got caught doing it, and he's trying to correct himself just as I'm trying to correct myself, just like some of the brethren out there are trying to correct themselves. Okay, so we get through this. I have a correction to make for me. Okay, hopefully the brethren will take that correction and learn also. So let's get started. What do we normally start with? We start with, let's start by taking a look, by looking up the Great Tribulation in a concordance. The Great Tribulation. They call it that. There's a seven year time period, and people are having all these different names for it. And they rarely call it what it's actually called. The time of Jacob's trouble. We'll get to that and prove that it's called the time of Jacob's trouble. But one of the biggest things that they love to call it is the Great Tribulation. And we're going to get into why they like to call it. Because they like to cross... Ultimately, I'm going to get ahead of myself. They like to cross dispensational lines. They like to deceive people into crossing dispensational lines. Okay. That there's always a hidden agenda. Anytime someone adds to the Word of God or subtracts from the Word of God, it's not innocent. I'm sorry, it's just not. If I do it, there's, there's reasons I do it sometimes because I'm following the man that does it. But the Bible teaches we're not supposed to be respecters of persons. This is supposed to be our final authority, not that man. So I'm still at fault. If I say something wrong and say, thus saith the Lord, and it's not in the scriptures... I can sit there, because I have before, brothers. I told you this. I've had people hit me up saying, where's that in the Bible? I'm like, well, it's... Well, it's... Where did I get that? And then I realized I got that from another teacher, and I'm just parroting what he said. I never took the time to look it up myself to make sure it was actually in there, in the Word of God. Make sure you're getting your King James Bible, God's perfect written word for English-speaking people. King James Bible's out and follow along. Okay? Uh, so I typed this in there, and remember I tell you I have a general concordance that I use, and then I have the sword searcher I'll open up if I want to look up specific phrases, or want to go in and do in a lot more uh, ways of looking things up, that this is limited. But for my just my basic studies, I do this, and then when I hit something up where I need to do a specific, like really hardcore word for word, it's got to have word for word, I'll open up the sword searcher. I don't know how to use the sword searcher as much as some of the brethren out there do, but I have a concordance that I use. So, if I would just type up the Great Tribulation and the Sword Searcher, specifically in that order, because that has to be in that order. When you say the, you turn Great Tribulation into a title, and it's talking about a specific time period, okay? The Great Tribulation turns Great Tribulation into a title. Okay, and we're going to read, and I'm getting ahead of myself, but we're going to go over Great Tribulation. Is Great Tribulation in the Bible? A lot of times, okay? But the Great Tribulation turns that seven-year time period into a title. Is the Great Tribulation. You type that in, it'll come out with zero. Zero. It's not in the Bible. But in my uh, concordance, where I just typed in the Great Tribulation, it doesn't have to be in specific order. These are what I came up with. Matthew 24, 21. 
Matthew 24, 21 says, For then, and it got the in the word then, because <laughs> that's the way this works, the in the word then, okay? Then, that's, that's what it's calling that time period. Then, it's not a title, it's just saying then, this time period, then, shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, nor, no, nor ever shall be. And as you see, it's not a title. It's a description of then. Then. What's going to happen then? Great Tribulation. Revelation 2.22. Remember, you can always pause the video and turn like I do when I watch Brethren. Pause, turn, because I'm a slow turner. And I'm trying to keep the length of these videos down by you can pause it and turn and unpause it. Because you might be a really fast turner and I'm just very slow. Revelation 2.22. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them, them, that's where you get the T-H-E, the, that's where it got the, but them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. So them is going to be going into great tribulation. Okay? But it's still not a title. Revelation is a description of what them are going to go to who commit fornication with her, and hers, Mystery Babylon, I believe, and them is the time of Jacob's trouble. The Jewish people predominantly, uh, the uh, salvation today is of the Jew first and the Greek, but when Jesus was preaching the kingdom of heaven, salvation was of the Jews. I don't want to get ahead of myself. That salvation was of the Jews, not Jews and Gentiles, just Jews. But you got this time period where you have Gentiles and Jews, and they're commit fornication with her, fornication with her, and they shall go into great tribulation that commit fornication with her. I mean, and I believe that today, that there's a lot of false Christianity out there that all goes back to uh, Mystery Babylon, the Catholic religion, the false Catholic religion, all these religions, Mormons, Jehovah's Witness, uh, Lutheran, even Baptists today, that are supposed to be King James Bible believers, a lot of their practices line up with Catholicism. They don't line up with this book. They don't. They start putting in a lot of works that you have to do these works to be considered a Baptist, to be considered one of us, you have to do all these works. Now don't get me wrong, when you get saved, you do good works, but the works are supposed to be based off Scripture. Their works are based off traditions of men, church fathers. And where did the church fathers get it from? The reformers. Where did the reformers get it from? Catholicism. Okay? It's not in the Bible. And I don't mean to go into too much explanation. My whole main point for this is, it's not a title, it's a description of them. What they're going to go through, them. Revelation 7.14 came up. And it said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. When it talks about who are these people, you've got to read Revelation 7 sometime. And it said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, because he asked, who are these people? And John's like, I don't know. Thou knowest. And he said to me, these, that's where we get the the, T-H-E, under the word these, are they which came out of great tribulation. These came out of great tribulation, but it's still not a title for that seven-year time period. It's a description of these. These people came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes. This is a whole other study, but they've washed their robes. I don't wash my robes. I'm washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. Okay, He washes me. I'm sealed into the day of redemption. In the time of Jacob's trouble, you're not sealed into the day of redemption unless you're one of the 144,000 Jews that are sealed in their forehead, and you have to endure to the end. And when Jesus comes back, then you will be saved. But you're not saved before that. You don't get saved to the end. You have to endure to the end. You've got to wash your own robes. You, you're doing the work. There's works involved. It's faith and works. But that's the these out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Okay? Once again, it's not a description of what that, a, a title, it's a description, sorry, but it's not a title of that time period. And once again, you still have people that are hard-hearted, they've seared their conscience with a hot iron, remember what the Bible says? Some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Their heart, I believe, their conscience. It's seared with a hot iron. Oh, this is stupid. It doesn't have to actually specifically 
Remember what we said with the new world, the new world order that's coming out, the new world religion, the one world Bible, the one world currency, all this stuff that's coming out for the time of Jacob's trouble, the one world Bible. What's the one world Bible? It's not a physical Bible you can hold in your hand. It's philosophy and the philosophy that it's not the words of God that matter, it's just the message. So you can ignore the words of God, change the words of God, and give whatever wonderful message you want. Even if it doesn't line up with the Bible. It's the message that matters. No, no, no. It's the words that define the message. The message doesn't get to change the words and mess up with the book. The message doesn't line up with the words. The message is wrong. Period. It's the word of God that matters. And you got people that are seared with a hot iron, the conscience is seared with a hot iron. I don't care. I don't care. I can't help those people. Only God can help those people. Okay. I can only preach truth. The truth of the matter, the great tribulation is not in the Bible, period. Period. It's not a title for that seven year time period. It's not in the Bible. Now you've heard me say seven year time period. Some people might be new to this. I was new to this. It was only about a year ago that I learned I've always just parroted what I've heard brethren uh, in ministry say. Forgive me. <coughs> I've parroted what brethren in ministry have said when they say Daniel's 70th week or that it's a seven-year time period. Um, but I've never understood where they get the seven-year time period. Well, let's go through this. I watched a brother in Christ, and he went through and really explained it, and it was pretty good. We're just going to do the basics but there's some brethren out there that have really good studies on going through all 70 weeks that Daniel is talking about. Turn to Daniel 9.24. Daniel 9.24. King James Bibles. Okay. Once again, I, I, I copy the verse over here and then I highlight things and underline things that I want to emphasize and talk about. Okay. Daniel 9.24. Daniel 9.24. 70, 70 weeks. That's where we get 70 weeks. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people. Remember what we read up there? When it talked about, then shall be great trib be tribulation. Then. There is a time period, but saying then, and there's great tribulation in it. Them, great tribulation. These, great tribulation. Here we have seventy weeks are determined upon thy people. Seventy weeks on thy people. Okay. Who's Daniel? Who's thy people to Daniel? It's not Gentiles. It's not the body of Christ. It's not the bride of Christ. Okay. It's the Jewish people, the twelve tribes of Israel. And upon thy holy city to finish the transgression, to finish the transgression, and to make an end of sin, and to make reconciliation for iniquity, and to bring in everlasting righteousness, and to seal up the vision and prophecy, and to, an, to anoint the most holy. Now, you get into this, the prophecy was is that they would have to flee the city for eight, uh, 70 years. I think it was 70 years. Okay. And this is when uh, Daniel, who got carried away into Babylon, you can read Daniel, and he's given a vision after that 70 years when they're allowed to return, to, uh, to the people get to return to Israel, to Jerusalem. That's when the 70 weeks start. Okay. Notice it's not actually called Daniel's 70th week. How many of you, I've, uh, this is where I'm correcting myself. I've called it Daniel's 70th week. It's time of Jacob's trouble or Daniel's 70th week. Really? Really? Chapter and verse where it says Daniel's 70th week? It doesn't actually say that. People are saying, oh, you're getting picky again. No, there are 70 weeks determined upon thy people. 70 weeks. It doesn't single out any individual week. It says there's 70 weeks. It's given a total of 70 weeks. Okay. But it doesn't actually say Daniel's 70th week. So where do we get that? Words of men. Men come in and say, well, we can make another title for that time period. No, there's only one title for that seven-year time period. Just like there's only one title for this time period. The time of the Gentiles. Okay. The time of the Gentiles. It's not church age. Right. And we talked about that in the other study. It, it's trying to get people to cross dispensational lines. It's preparing this world. The body of Christ is going up, and it's preparing all the fakes and the frauds that are committing. We just read about it, committing adultery with Mystery Babylon, the Catholic whore, 
okay? The Catholic Church and all these professing Christians out there, it's preparing them to go into the time of Jacob's trouble because they're fakes, they're frauds. Most of the world that has a profession of, uh, I'm a Christian, they're not saved. And it's not me being the final authority. This is the final authority. They reject the true plan of salvation. The Jesus they worship has no basis in Scripture. Traditions of men uh, feeding their flesh. Sin and wickedness abounds and feeding their flesh and, and worldliness and culture. You even have some brethren that are falling away getting into culture. Thinking culture is more important than the Word of God. But it's not called Daniel's 70th week. It says 70 weeks are determined upon thy people. Thy people, and there's a description, 70 weeks. It's a time, it's, a, it's an amount of time. But it doesn't actually separate it and say this is this time period, this is that time. It just says there's going to be 70 weeks and it's determined on thy people. It's a description of what's going to happen to thy people. It's a time limit of this is how long I'm going to be dealing with thy people to what? Finish the transgression. And to make an end of sin. To make an end of sin. All right. Peter 1.21. Remember, this is a prophecy. It says, And seal up the vision of prophecies and to anoint the most holy. Peter 1.21 we read, For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. The reason I bring this up is, there's people in the Old Testament that the Holy Ghost would come down temporarily and leave. It was just for that moment, for that event, for whatever God needed that person to do. And then the Holy Ghost would leave. Sometimes the Holy Ghost would come down and stay, like with King, David, with King Saul and King David. Only thing is, is it wasn't, still wasn't permanent. You could lose the Holy Ghost. King Saul lost the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost left him because of his sin and his wickedness. Because there was works involved. Okay? The body and soul were still connected. And when the body started messing up, you had King David. You say, well, King David committed some great sins. Yeah, he did. But his heart was still for the Lord, and he came to the Lord broken, and God forgave him. Saul was stubborn. I ain't doing anything wrong. We already did that study before in the past where Saul, uh, Samuel comes up to him and shows him his sin, his wickedness. He didn't obey the word. Here's the word. It's like what we're doing today, brothers and Christ. Here's the word of God, and people will still say, but I am obeying the word of God. No, you're not. I'm not adding to the Word of God. Yes, you are. This is Samuel coming to Saul. You're not. What is the bleeding of these sheep in mine ears? Oh, we did obey the Lord of the Lord. No, what are these sheep? Oh, we got them and we kept them to sacrifice to the Lord, thy God. It always comes down to when, when, you, when they're doing wrong, it's thy God. Instead of my God, it's thy God. Okay? And he still says, but we still did right. We still did right. And Samuel's like, no, you didn't. No, you didn't. And you have to deal with those people. And I'm having to deal with those people. You have to deal with those people. But you can show them word for word. Where is this at in the Bible? And it's not there. And they still claim, I'm obeying the Lord. I'm a Bible believer. I'm obeying the Lord. But people can lose the, Old the, the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament. It could come. It could go. You could lose it. Today we're sealed into the day of redemption. In the time of the Gentiles, we cannot lose salvation. That's important for later. Okay, when we go into the time of Jacob's trouble. Now, real quick, we're not going to get into time of Jacob's trouble too hardcore. We're sticking with the title, why we get seven years. The next question on here is, how do we get seven-year time period? I always wondered that. And I kept asking, how do you get a seven-year time period? If it's Daniel, there's 70 weeks determined upon my people. How do we get a seven-year time period? Turn to Genesis 29:18. Genesis 29:18. A lot of you guys know this story about Jacob. Okay, he fell in love with Rachel and wanted Rachel. <clears throat> and if you know the story, he he fled because his brother was trying was wanting to kill him for stealing his birthright. And his parent, his parents, Jake uh, Isaac, told him he wanted him to take a child, uh, a, a wife. I'm sorry take a wife, because he had 12 sons, to take a wife of his kindred. Okay. So he got over to Laban, and he makes he strikes up a deal with Laban to have Rachel as his wife. Let's read this. Genesis 29, 18. And Jacob loved Rachel and said, I will serve thee seven years for Rachel, thy younger daughter. 
And Laban said, It is better that I give her to thee than that I should give her to another man. Abide with me. And Jacob served seven years for Rachel. So he said he worked seven years, and then he actually worked the seven years. Mm -hmm. you say, well, that's where we get seven. But you say, well, so how does that have to do with Daniel's, so, like, the 70 weeks that are determined upon thy people? We're going to get there. Keep going. And they seemed unto him but a few days for the love where he had loved her. And Jacob said unto Laban, Give me my wife, for my days are fulfilled, that I may go in unto her. And Laban gathered together all the men of the place and made a feast. And it came to pass in the evening that he took Leah his daughter and brought her, unto, brought her to him. And he went in unto her, and Laban gave unto his daughter Leah uh, Zilpah his maid for a handmaid. So he gets Leah instead of Rachel. 25. And it came to pass that in the morning, behold, it was Leah. And he said to Laban, What is this that thou hast done unto me? Did not I serve thee for Rachel? Wherefore then hast thou beguiled me? And Laban said, It must not be done in our country to give the younger before the firstborn. Okay. You can go into the whole story and study on why he was deceived, because he did he deceived, and then he was God was getting him back, whatever. But the important part of this is that he worked seven years for Rachel and ended up getting Leah. So what's going to happen here? Verse 27. Fulfill her week. Her week. I threw in her there because it's important. It's not just any week. It's a week that's related to her. Just like up here we see 70 weeks are determined upon thy people. It's linked to a specific people. Here, her week, that week is, is linked to a specific person. It's talking about Rachel. Fulfill her week. Notice it says week. And we will give thee also the, for, the, for the service which thou shalt serve with me yet seven other years. So a week can be seven days. Or a week can be seven years. And when you get to uh, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people, the 70 weeks, each week is seven years. We'll get into that in just a second. Verse 28. And Jacob did so and fulfilled her week. He fulfilled 70 years and that, se or seven, seven years, and that seven years was about getting Rachel as a wife. Okay. And gave him Rachel his daughter to wife also, and Levin gave to Rachel his daughter Bilhah his handmaid to be her maid. So you see there that a week can be seven days, or in this context, week is seven years. So if that's 70 weeks, and each week is seven years, 69 weeks are accounted for up to Jesus Christ. I'm not going to do that study. There's brethren that have done that study. You can look it up. Uh, 69 weeks from when the 70 years ended... That, that they were in banishment from Israel and Daniel was carried away into Miss Babylon. When that 70 years was up, that's when Dan the 70 weeks started that are determined upon thy people. And from that point to Jesus' death on the cross, or Jesus' coming, I can't remember which, but when Jesus comes and the God manifests in the flesh and the likeness of sinful flesh is 69 weeks. Okay? 483 years. When you do the time period from Daniel to Jesus Christ, 483 years, seven years are missing. Because when you do seven, 70 weeks and you do 70 times seven, it's 490. There's seven years missing. There's a week that's missing. Okay. The 70th week is yet to come. It got put off for the time of the Gentiles. Remember, blindness in part has happened to Israel. They rejected Jesus Christ. They rejected the kingdom of heaven. They rejected Jesus as being God manifest in the flesh. Remember when he asked Peter, who, who you say that I am? Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. The King is here to rule and reign. Jesus is capital S, Son of God. He's capital S, Son of Man. His lineage goes back on his mother's side, goes back to King David. On his father's side, it's God the Father, God Almighty. Okay? They put, it got put off. Blindness in part, Paul tells us, has happened to Israel. And, and till the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Okay? This time period, that's the time of the Gentiles, is, it's, it's like, almost like they hit a pause button. God said, I'm going to pause that 70 weeks. We stopped at 69, it was about to be fulfilled, and the Jewish people, mainly the ruling class, the religious ruling class, 
rejected Jesus Christ. So there was a pause button. There's still seven weeks. That's our seven, there's still a one week that hasn't been accounted for seven years. We're still missing seven years in that 70th week. That's going to happen after the time of the Gentiles has been fulfilled. We get caught up. That 70th week is going to happen. That seven years is going to happen. Luke 21, 24, we read, And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive into all nations, and Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. This is Jesus' future prophecy. You guys are rejecting me as king. The kingdom of heaven is going to get put off. That 70th week is going to, get, is going to come true. There's still going to be a 70th week. So that's how we get, there's seven years, and it hasn't happened yet, okay? But they, today people are trying to call it the Great Tribulation, the Great Tribulation, but the Bible never calls it the Great Tribulation. So what does the Bible actually call? So we know there's seven years, that 70th week, but it's not called Daniel's 70th week. I've called it that, but that's not what it's called. It's, it's a description of a time period, 70 weeks, are going to be determined upon by people. And as we see, God can hit the pause button anytime He wants. And say, okay, we're going to hit the pause button. That 70th week hasn't happened yet. Now, I can understand how they get Daniel's 70th week and wanting to call it Daniel's 70th week. <clears throat> but you know why they want to call it Daniel's 70th week more than they want to call it the time of Jacob's trouble? Because Daniel was among Gentiles. And he was living among the Gentile nation. And he was given prophecies. Uh, visions were being given to King Nebuchadnezzar and uh, Gentile kings. And he was given prophetic prophecies to Gentiles. So somehow they can try to find some wiggle room and try to make it about the time of Jacob's trouble about Gentiles if they take out the title time of Jacob's trouble and say Daniel's 70th week instead. It's not called Daniel's 70th week. What is it called? Turn to Jeremiah 37. Turn to Jeremiah 37. Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 7. Is that right? Yep, 30, verse 7. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. Notice there is a the before the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay. This is a title. This is the title, okay? Genesis 32, 28. How do we know that Jacob is... Well, Jacob doesn't necessarily mean it's taught about Israel. You have some people that are, that are just... They're so desperate to try to take away what God says. That time period is about going, God going back and dealing with the Jewish people to fulfill prophecy that hasn't been fulfilled to prove that God is God. His word is true. Okay? We're just going to go through a lot of these real quick. Genesis 32, 28. And he said... Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For a prince hast thou power with God and with men, and hast prevailed. Genesis 35.10, And God said unto him, Thy name is Jacob. Thy name shall not be called any more Jacob, but Israel shall be thy name. And, be, and he called his name Israel. It doesn't stop here. What did we just read in Jeremiah? The time of Jacob's trouble. Let's go to Isaiah. Isaiah 41.8. But thou, Israel, art my servant Jacob. Israel, art my servant Jacob, whom I have chosen the seed of Abraham, my friend. Isaiah 43, 1. But now, thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel. He called him Jacob, then he called him Israel. One and the same. This is after Jacob, the man Jacob, he's dead and buried. He's long gone. But his seed, when God said he'd make him a great nation, his 12 sons, 12 tribes, the 12, they call him the patriarch, <coughs> sorry, the patriarch of the 12 tribes, um, his people, Jake, it starts with Jacob, then his 12 tribe, the 12 sons become the 12 tribes, and it becomes a nation. Okay. Fear not, for I have redeemed thee, I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. Thy name, Jacob, and the Israel, they're one and the same. 
Israel, uh, Isaiah 43, 22. But thou hast not called upon me, O Jacob, but thou hast been weary of me, O Israel. They're one and the same. Isaiah 48, 1. We're going to just really hammer this home. Hear ye this, O house of Jacob, which are called by the name of Israel. Jacob is Israel. Israel is Jacob. Okay. And are come forth out of the waters of Judah, which swear by the name of the Lord and make mention of the God of Israel, but not in truth nor in righteousness. Jeremiah 46, 27. Here we get Jeremiah 46, 27. You have Jeremiah 37. Remember it says, Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. Jeremiah 46, 27 says, But fear not thou, O my servant Jacob, and be not dismayed, O Israel. They're one and the same. He's not talking about Jacob, a dead man that's, in, that was, that's down in Abraham's bosom at this time. He's talking to living the, the Israel and calling him Jacob and calling him Israel. They're, they're one and the same. For behold, I will save thee from afar off and thy seed from the land of their captivity, and Jacob shall return. How can Jacob return if this is not talking about the people of Israel, his children, his seed, the children, the, the, the Jewish nation? It is. And be in rest and at ease, and none shall make him afraid. And Micah 3.8, we read, But truly I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord, and of judgment, and of might, to declare unto Jacob his transgression, and, and to Israel his sin. They're one and the same. Time and time again. Israel, Jacob, Israel, Jacob, Israel, Jacob, Jacob, Israel. They're one and the same. So when you see it say the time of Jacob's trouble, it's Israel's trouble. God goes back to finishing that 70th week that he's determined upon thy people, talking to Daniel, talking about the Jewish people. Okay? He shall be saved out of it. Remember Jeremiah 37, it says, Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. And it says, But he shall be saved out of it. He. The title for that time period is the time of Jacob's trouble. And he shall be saved out of it. Who's the he? The Jewish people. Turn to Revelation 7.3. I, I, I got a, a response by a brother in Christ saying, Are you saying that Gentiles can't get saved in the time of Jacob's trouble? I'm saying Gentiles are not present tense saved in the time of Jacob's trouble. They're not sealed into the day of redemption like we are today. When the body of Christ leaves, that seal gets broken because we're redeemed. You, when you redeem something, you break the seal, saying it's mine. When that seal gets broken and redeemed, not broken like, okay, you lost your salvation, please. I know some people are going to try to twist my words. But we are sealed until the day of redemption. What happens on the day of redemption? That seal gets broken and we get redeemed and we all get to go up. We get new bodies. This mortal shall put on immortality. Okay? This corruption shall put on incorruption. We get to go up. And when we go up and the time of, of Jacob's trouble starts, that seal is not there anymore for the Gentiles. What about the Jews? Remember? And he, and he shall be saved out of it. Saved out of it. Revelation chapter 7 verse 3 says, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servant of our God in their forehead. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed a hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. I tried to explain to that person, and he, he got it. Praise the Lord through the word of God. In that in time of Jacob's trouble, if you don't have this seal, I'm, I'm going to keep reading. If you don't have this seal, you have to endure to the end to be saved. You're not present tense saved in the time of Jacob's trouble. You have to endure to the end, and when Jesus comes back, he comes back and saves those that have endured to the end. You have to endure to the end, and then, the Bible says, and then thou shalt be saved. You're not present tense saved like we are today. These Jews are present tense saved in the time of Jacob's trouble because they've got the seal. You have to have a seal in order to be saved. Okay? And, the, and today you have to have that seal, that Holy Spirit of promise. In the time of Jacob's trouble, you have to have this seal. And this seal is for the Jews and only for the Jews. 
Gentiles don't have this seal. All the tribes of the children of Israel, let's keep going, of the tribe of Judea were sealed 12,000. Tribe of Judea, Israel, Jacob. Of the tribe of Reuben were sealed 12,000. Reuben, Israel, Jacob. Of the tribe of Gad were sealed 12,000. Gad, Israel, Jacob. I'm going to keep saying that after every one, just to really drive it home. Of the tribe of Asher were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Naphtali were sealed 12,000. Asher, Naphtali, Israel, Jacob. It's, even the, it's the time of Jacob's trouble. But he shall be saved out of it. He, these people right here that are sealed. Of the tribe of Manasseh were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Simeon were sealed 12,000. Manasseh, Simeon, Israel, Jacob. Of the tribe of Levi were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Ishkakar was sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Zebulun was sealed 12,000. So you have Levi, Issachar, Zebulun, sons of Jacob, which is Israel. Of the tribe of Joseph were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Benjamin were sealed 12,000. Joseph and Benjamin. These are all 12 sons of Jacob. Jacob, your name's no longer Jacob, but Israel. And they shall be saved out of it. Now you're starting to get right. They don't want to call it the time of Jacob's trouble. All these post and mid trib people that are working for Satan and trying to get all these false converts of today that have committed abomination with the whore of Babylon that we read about in Revelation, they're preparing them for the time of Jacob's trouble. Oh, you could go, the body of Christ goes through the time of Jacob's trouble. Oh, you're sealed into the day of redemption in the time of Jacob's trouble. They're lying to you. If you're truly saved and born again, you're not going into that time period because this, we're sealed in the time of the Gentiles. We're sealed. We're going to get caught up. You truly get saved and born again, God saves you. God does the saving. You can't save yourself with head knowledge having the knowledge of Jesus Christ and trying to disguise that head knowledge as faith when it isn't. True faith is backed by, by action, by deeds that line up this book, the changed life, the new creature in Christ Jesus. Faith without works is dead being alone. In the time of Jacob's trouble, there's works and faith. For instruction and righteousness, faith, real faith is always followed up by works. Look at Abraham. He believed God. But his works are what really backed up his faith. Did he not pack up everything and leave when God told him to take off? I'm going to make you a nation. Yes, he did. Did he not take his son up there to sacrifice his son? Actions, deeds, works. And that's talked about in James. Saying that if he never did that, his faith is dead. It's worthless. Oh yeah, I believe he'll, God will provide himself a lamb. Did you take your son up there to be sacrificed? Oh no, I never did that. Then he didn't have faith. He was false. He was a fake. He was a fraud. If that happened, it didn't. He actually took his son up there. So his faith was sure, but it was backed by works. Okay? Instruction righteous, true conversion, true faith, believing in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross, produces a changed life after salvation. People that just have head knowledge, I hate to go off on this, but people who just have head knowledge... They're lost, and they're going to go into that time of Jacob's trouble with the knowledge of Jesus Christ and what he did. But they don't have the faith. There was no changed life. They skipped repentance. They always take repentance out. They skip repentance, true biblical repentance. They'll, the thing that we're learning is they're changing the titles in the Bible. They change definitions in the Bible. They change descriptions in the Bible. Why? Because they have a narrative, and that narrative is um, they're trying to they're servants of Satan trying to prepare this world, this so-called profession Christian world, the fakes and frauds out there, the Bible uses false converts, okay, for the time of Jacob's trouble. And they go into that time period. Okay, and they are going to be deceived. Oh, you're sealed. If you're saved, you're sealed. There is no seal for a Gentile in the time of Jacob's trouble. It's only for the Jews. Why? Because God goes back to, un remember, he hit the pause button, the time of the Gentiles. Salvation went out to the world. It, the, kingdom of, um, the kingdom of heaven is just for the Jews. That got put off. The pause button got hit. Salvation went out to the world. Today, anybody can get saved, Jew or Gentile, the Jew first, then the Gentile. Anybody can get saved, and you are sealed into the day of redemption. When you get the Holy Spirit, you can't lose it. You can't lose salvation. It's not yours. 
It's not about works. You didn't earn salvation with your knowledge, your head knowledge, like these easy believism, head knowledge. I got all this head knowledge, therefore I've earned salvation with my fake faith. No. You're sealed into the day of redemption. You come to God broken repentance. You believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ here, not head knowledge, but actually faith, real faith. And that real faith is, is proved by the changed life. By their fruits you shall know them. The changed life after salvation. We are sealed today. You go into that time period, you're not sealed. The only people that are sealed are the 12 tribes. 144,000 and 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes. They're the only ones that are sealed. God goes back to, he undoes the pause button and goes back to dealing with the Jewish people to finish that 70 weeks that are determined upon thy people. He goes back to the 70th week. There's still one week that's unaccounted for. And that's what he's going to be dealing with. Now we'll get back to, I've already said it a little bit, but why change the title from what the Bible actually says? Why can't these people, these post-trib, these mid-trib, why can't they actually call it the time of Jacob's trouble? Why are we as Bible believers getting perverted by the yea hath God said, a better rendering would be that disease of trying to change God's word? Why do we, as even though we believe we don't go into that time period, why do we have a hard time calling it by what the Bible actually says? Because that disease has gone out throughout the whole body of Christ. The Bible talks about in those days there shall be a falling away first. We're in the falling away. The brethren have a hard time just sticking with the Word of God in every way, shape, and form. I have problems. I'm working on it. God's saying, hey, you said this. That's not in the Bible. Daniel's 70th week is not a title for that seven-year time period. Yet people try to grab it and use it as a title. I have. It's not a title for that time period. What's the title for that time period? The time of Jacob's trouble, Jeremiah 37. Okay. But why change the title from the Bible that the Bible actually says? Let's go back to Jeremiah 37. Jeremiah 37 says, Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it is even the time of Jacob's trouble. And we read in Revelation 7, 3, you read that the time of Jacob's trouble, it's about the tri all the tribes of the children of Israel in verse five, uh, 4. When it talks about the seal, who were sealed in that time of Jacob's trouble. It's called the time of Jacob's trouble. Who sealed in that time of Jacob's trouble? Jews. The 12 tribes. So why change it? They don't want people realizing that the body of Christ doesn't go through that. They have all these fakes and fraud out and about. These false religions professing Christianity, professing a Jesus Christ. Remember what Paul said? You have people going around, they're pre preaching another gospel, which he did not preach. Another Jesus, which he did not preach, and getting them to receive another spirit that he hadn't received. That was that another spirit. It's the spirit of Antichrist, which John talks about. That spirit of Antichrist that is already in the world today, and that man of sin, that son of perdition, that Antichrist that shall come, will pop up in the time of Jacob's trouble. But things are getting prepared today. That spirit of Antichrist is already in the world today. Oh, it's not the words of God that matter. It's just the message. And what do they do? They tweak the message. And they tweak the message enough that where they can make the body of Christ go through the time of Jacob's trouble. That's why they call it the church age. So they can make the body of Christ go into the time of Jacob's trouble. Why they call it the great tribulation. So they can make the body of Christ, the bride of Christ, go into the time of Jacob's trouble. Why do they change the name? Simple. To deceive. Okay. To deceive. Okay, now the Jews, about the Jews, and only Jews are sealed in this time period. So when I say about salvations of the Jews in the time of Jacob's trouble, that's what I'm talking about. There are Gentiles and Jews that aren't sealed that might be able to endure to the end, but they're not present tense saved. They've got to endure to the end. They have to get their heads cut off. There's going to be Gentiles and Jews that get their heads cut off, okay, in the time of Jacob's trouble. They're not present tense saved. Present tense salvation in the time of Jacob's trouble is of the Jews. These 144,000 that we read about that are sealed in their forehead, they're sealed. They're saved. We read about it. He shall save them out of it. The time of Jacob's trouble. All right. I'll make sure I said it right. 
It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. Those people are present tense saved, not Gentiles. I've always been taught, well, they, they can lose their salvation. You can't lose something that you don't have. See, that's another way I've been saying things wrong. In the time of Jacob's trouble, the only people that have salvation are these 144,000 Jews that are sealed in their forehead. Everyone else has to work and earn and endure to the end. Get their heads cut off, die in a state of faith and works, doing the works that God said, not you know, obeying God's commandments, having the testimony of Jesus Christ and keeping His commandments, and they end up dying and losing their head, or they have to endure to the end. But they don't have salvation until Jesus comes back at the end of the time of Jacob's trouble. That's the whole point. Some people are trying to correct me. It's like, you, you're ignorant of Scripture, just like I was just parroting what somebody else said. It sounded good. You can lose your salvation the time of Jacob. No, you don't have it. You've got to earn it. You've got to endure to the end. You don't have, you don't have salvation. Only people that have salvation is this 144,000. Matthew 24, 21. This is the verse that we're going back to it. This is the verse that they like to grab. Matthew 24, 21. What's Matthew 24? It's the Sermon on the Mount. It's God telling the Jewish people what they're going to have to go through for the kingdom of heaven. Remember, the kingdom of heaven, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Let's read this real quick. Matthew 24, 21. For then shall be great tribulation, such was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. It's talking about that time of Jacob's trouble. There's going to be such great tribulation that was never heard of before, nor ever again. But today, do we go through tribulation today? I'm getting a little ahead of myself. That's what they use to deceive you. This is where they try to make the time of Jacob's trouble about the body of Christ simply going through great tribulation. We're just going to go through great tribulation. We've always gone through great tribulation. We have gone through tribulation as the body of Christ. And it's, just, it, it's, it's, it's about the body of Christ still. But that's not a, like I said, we said, that's not a title for that time period. It's a description. And who is Jesus preaching to? They don't ever like to do that. Matthew 24, 21, who is Jesus preaching to? He's preaching to the body of Christ. There is no body of Christ right then. Who's he preaching to? Well, go back to Matthew 24, 3. And he sat upon the Mount of Olives. The disciples came unto him, privately saying, tell us. When shall these things be, and what shall be the signs of thy coming and the end of the world? He's talking to the Jewish people. We're going to get into that a little bit more, but I threw this in here. When shall these things be? Jeremiah 37, Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. When shall these things be? Verse, okay. That's what the Sermon on the Mount is. It's talking about the time of Jacob's trouble going into the kingdom of heaven, What's the next one? What shall the signs of thy coming, as at the end of the time of Jacob's trouble, that leads into the day of Christ, the thousand-year reign of Jesus Christ? 2 Peter 3, eight. But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord is a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises, some men count slackness, but is long-suffering towards us, word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance, instruction, righteousness. God's always, from Adam and Eve to today, is always seeking mankind that when we screw up, and we always do, to repent. He's given us opportunities to repent. That's his heartfelt desire. Repent, and I'll forgive you. Verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that there that are therein shall be burned up. Okay? The day of the Lord. What shall be the signs of the end of the world? Remember, they asked three things. When shall these things be? Well, that's the time of Jacob's trouble. The day of the Lord. When Satan's let loose for a little while. And then you read there where it talks about heaven passes away and great noise. That happens after Satan's let loose for a season, after the day of the Lord, after a thousand years. Okay? The day of the Lord and the kingdom of heaven oftentimes is referenced to all three of these time periods as, as one. The time of Jacob's trouble, the day of the Lord, Satan's let loose for a little while. Then the heavens and the earth, the old heaven and the earth is destroyed. And then you have the great white throne judgment in Revelation. Okay. What shall be the sign of the end of the world? Revelation 27. 
And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be let be loosed out of his prison, and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sands of the seas. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city. And fire came down from heaven, God out of heaven, and devoured them. What did we read in Second Peter? In which the heavens shall pass away with great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. Praise God. Remember, for the day of the Lord, it's not in here, but for the day of the Lord, he was, he, it says he was let loose, but he was put in the bottomless pit for the thousand years that Jesus reigned. Then he was let loose. This is where he's actually going into the lake of fire. We're done with him. He's done. He's toast, as they say. Where the beast and the false prophet are, I like to keep pointing this out, they are. They're still down there burning and wailing and gnashing of teeth after a thousand years. The lake of fire is not, not uh, hell is not just annihilation. It's not separation from God. It's eternal torment. God opened doors, provided a way for people to get saved. You reject getting sal salvation, you reject getting saved. You go to hell, it's eternal torment. And shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Right there, word for word. Shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it, on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the book of life according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in them, in it. And someone told me that before. See, animals have souls? No. When the, if you read about the time of Jacob's trouble, the oceans are turned to blood. And the ships that we have today, all of them would just sink. They're all made out of metal. Not made out of wood. Metal. They would all just sink like a rock. You're going to have a lot of people who die in the ocean. Men, women that die in the ocean. Okay. We've got barges that's taking people, huge barges that are made solid metal engines, and they're made to transport people from, you know, coast, uh, continent to continent over the ocean, and they're going to have men, women, and children on it. And if the oceans get turned to blood, those metal ships aren't going to float. Their buoyancy is based off of salt water. That's a whole other st study and, and true science. They're based off of salt water. Those huge ships that are sitting in the ocean could not be in a, a freshwater lake. They would sink like a rock, even in a freshwater lake. There's a buoyancy in the ocean. And when all that's taken away, that's where you get these people that are dead. And death and hell delivered up the dead, which were in them, were in them and they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast in the lake of fire. They're judged according to their works. But we see there that when, Paul, when the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 24, you go back to 3, they're saying, When shall these things be? And what shall be the signs of thy coming when he comes back? And the end of the world. It's talking about every, the time of Jacob's trouble, the day of the Lord, Satan gets loose for a little while. It's talking about all three time periods lumped into one. That's the kingdom of heaven. When, Paul, when Jesus has given his parables on the kingdom of heaven. And people always try to grab those parables where Jesus is talking about the kingdom of heaven and saying, well, no, Jesus is talking about the body of Christ today. No, he isn't. We can learn from it. Things that are written before time are written for our learning. We can learn a lot of lessons. I have Bible studies, courageous man, foolish man. We talk about some of the parables that Jesus spoke. But doctrinally, they're not for us today. They're for the kingdom of heaven. And the kingdom of heaven is not for today. The kingdom of heaven includes all three of these events that we talked about, all these three time periods. Time of Jacob's trouble, the day of the Lord, and the period where Satan gets let loose for a while. Mm -hmm. So, they make it about the, the, the time of the church's trouble. They change the title from the time of Jacob's trouble to the time of the church's trouble. Why? Why do they change it to the Great Tribulation and say it's the time of the church's trouble? Because they're trying to get the body of Christ to go through. Why do they change this time period to the church age? 
because they can steal from the Bible and say, well, it talks about a church in the time of Jacob's trouble. That's got to be us because this is the only church age. This is the church age. It, the only time, anytime, every time church is mentioned, it has to be about the body of Christ today. No, it doesn't. There's church in the Old Testament. There's church today. There's church in the time of Jacob's trouble. There's church in the kingdom of heaven. Church just means called out assembly. Okay. So how are they trying to deceive you, brothers of Christ? They're deceiving you by changing it to tribulation. It's not Jacob's trouble. It's tribulation. Why? Romans, turn to Romans 8.35. Romans 8.35. See if we can get this back up and running. Tribulation. You know what tribulation means? Severe affliction. Distress, distresses of life. Vexations. Do we have that today? We're going to read scriptures where it says we do have tribulation today. So by changing that time period to the time of uh, to the great tribulation, they can make the body of Christ go through it because we have tribulation today. The Bible even says we have tribulation. But when you hit them up and say chapter and verse where it calls that seven year time period the great tribulation, they can't find it. And then I would hit them up and say, why do you refuse to call it what God called it? I know why. Because then it would debunk everything that you're teaching. It's for the body of Christ. No, it isn't. It's the time of Jacob's trouble, and he shall be saved out of it. He, Jacob, Israel, the 144,000 that are sealed in their forehead. But it says, severe affliction, distress of life, vexation. Scriptures often denotes the troubles and distresses was perceived from persecution. When tribulation or persecution arise because of the word, he is offended. Matthew 13, 21. And the world ye should have tribulation, John 6, 33. But be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Talking about Jesus Christ. For I have overcome the world. Okay. Tribulation tends to happen to people. Okay. It just means what we just read. That you go through hard, hard times. And... When it comes to the church, I mean, if you read through the Bible, anybody, anybody that gets called out to be separate from the world, okay, we read about Egypt, they came out of, the Jews came out of Egypt and were supposed to be separate from Egypt and they kept wanting to go back to Egypt, but they would face persecution when they came out of Egypt. They're trying to travel to the promised land and all these people were, per we don't want anything with your land, we're not going to steal from you, we're just trying to get to the land that God promised us and we need to pass through, they were being persecuted. Okay, they had to go through tribulation. They had to go through hard times. Anybody that gets called out to be separate, to serve God and do things God's way, you're going to go through tribulation. And by changing that title to the Great Tribulation, it's not a title for that time period, they can make anybody go through it. I'm realizing that the number one thing they've done, Brother Jesus Christ, is, is they, most people that are opposed to mid-trib, they hate dispensationalism. They really do. And you hit them up and you say, hey, do you believe there's an Old Testament and a New Testament? They'll say yes, and you say, congratulations, you're dispensational. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. It's, it goes back to Saul, uh, Samuel talking to Saul. You haven't obeyed the Lord. Yes, I have. No, you haven't. Yes, I have. No, you haven't. Yes, I have. Okay, God's done with you. We can only preach the truth for so long. If they don't want the truth, they don't want the truth. Romans 8.35. Turn to Romans 8.35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? That's for today. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? So tribulation? It means we're going to be going through tribulation today? Absolutely. Today. Not the time of Jacob's trouble. Today we're going through tribulation. Or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword, as it is written. For thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Romans 5.3 Romans 5, 3. Turn back a few chapters. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulations worketh patience. That, that's for today. No, no, no. Romans is the Romans road to hell. Stay away from anybody who tries to say Romans is not written to us today. It's part of the Pauline epistles. It's written to Gentiles. Stay away from anybody who tries to teach the Romans road to hell when it talks about the salvation repentance towards God, faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, hell, for godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrows of the world worketh death. They always try to say, that's not for us. Stay away from those servants of Satan. Stay away from them, or they're going to mess you up. 
Romans 12, 12. They don't mind grabbing from Romans when it comes to this. Oh yeah, tribulation. They love that verse, one that says that shall tribulation or distress or persecution. They love using that verse for today. But when it comes to true plan of salvation, when it comes to repentance, it comes as part of the plan of salvation. How to get saved? Oh, that's not, that's the Romans road to hell. You're dealing with Satanists, servants of Satan. Romans 12, 12, rejoice in hope, patient in tribulation, continually instant in prayer, patient in tribulation. So we go through tribulation today, absolutely. 2 Corinthians, who comforteth us in all our tribulation? This is important. Who comforteth in all tribulation? Who's the comforter? The Holy Spirit. We're going to get into this a little bit. In the time of Jacob's trouble, I don't believe people... It's going to go back to being like the Old Testament, where the Holy Spirit can come, it can go, it can come down, you can lose it. It's not like today, where we are given the Comforter, we're sealed into the Day of Redemption. We were, before we got saved, we were without God and without hope in the world. Now we have that blessed hope. We can go through anything. God, we have God with us. We have peace. In the time of Jacob's trouble, peace is taken from the earth. Today we have peace. No matter what's going on in the world, when we're not supposed to be entangled with the affairs of this life, who have chosen him to be a soldier, don't get entangled with going on in the world. But the world, they're fighting each other over money, power, fleshly things, sinful things, worldly things. And they're just miserable. And they're, 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 some of them are committing suicide. Uh, they're, just, they're just miserable. We have that peace through all this. We can go through any tribulation and we have peace. Who comforteth us in all tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are, are in any trouble? The body of Christ can comfort one another. By the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. And we have the Comforter, the Holy Spirit. 2 Corinthians 7 4. 2 Corinthians 7 4. Great is my boldness of speech towards you, great is my glory of you. I am filled with comfort. I am exceedingly joyful in all our tribulation. Do we have tribulation today? Absolutely. Ephesians 3.13 Wherefore I desire that ye faint, faint not at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. Once again, my tribulation. Paul's going through the tribulations. 1 Thessalonians 3.4 For verily, when we were with you, we told you before that we should suffer tribulation even as it came to pass, and ye know. 2 Thessalonians 1.4 So that we ourselves glory in you in the church of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that ye endure. Brothers and Christ, we can look back at the church history and look at everything that the body of Christ has gone through in tribulation. You've had brethren that have been executed, burned at the stake, tortured. Okay? And God has given, us, given them peace through it all. Through it all. Have we gone through tribulation today? Absolutely. Absolutely. And what I mean by today, I'm talking about the time of the Gentiles, when salvation went out to the world. When God sent the Comforter, we get the Holy Spirit, we're sealed. We have the Holy Spirit in us to comfort us through all these hard times. We have that blessed hope, that guarantee that, that these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know you have eternal life, and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. We have that Holy Spirit of promise, that seal. We're looking for that blessed hope. No matter how many times I fail, no matter how many times I fall, God can pick me back up in this life, but God's going to pick us all up one day. And God's going to carry us all home one day. Okay? No matter what tribulation we go through, that time of Jacob's trouble, it says there'll be none like it. Why? Because you're not sealed into the day of redemption in the time of Jacob's trouble. You don't have that comforter the way we have it today. It's sealed, we have it, and that time of Jacob's trouble, you fail, you take the mark, you worship the beast, you lose. You're guaranteed to go to hell. If you try, when you read, we've read about that in Revelation, when you try to add to or subtract from the book of Revelation, you fail. You lose, you go to hell. Okay? You are not sealed. There's works. There's commands of God that if you break those commands, you go to hell. Okay? You don't have that assurance that we have today. 
But they'll grab these verses saying, look, we go through tribulation, so we go through that great, that, that, the great tribulation. No. You see the play on words? How they're trying to deceive you? It's not called the great tribulation. We get that out. It's called the time of Jacob's trouble. For that time is great. Okay. I want to read it again. The time is, for it's even the time of Jacob's trouble, and he shall be saved out of it. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. None is like it. Can you imagine having to go through tribulation today with no Holy Spirit? Or having the Holy Spirit and thinking that, and no, like King David, that you could lose it? No, and King David knew. Saul lost it. King Saul, he lost it. And, and David's there praying, Lord, take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Being fearful. See, today we're not given the spirit of fear. But in the time of Jacob's trouble, there's a spirit of fear. Peace is taken from the earth. If you screw up and you give in, you take the mark and you worship the beast, you go to hell. There's fear there. There's no comfort. There's fear. Okay. But they'll grab this tribulation where we have the comforter. We have that seal. And then they'll say, well, it applies to the, time, to the great tribulation, which is called the time of Jacob's trouble. And it doesn't. The tribulation in that time period is great. It is so great. Why? Because the tribulation that we face today is from Satan and his children. It's from this wicked world. The tribulation that they're going to be facing is not only from Satan and his children in the wicked world, it's from God himself, his wrath being poured out on this world in the time of Jacob's trouble. There's no time that's greater than that. And that ever was before or ever shall be. Okay? Brothers and sisters in Christ, alas, alas, for that day is great. I know I pre-repeated alas, but alas, for that day is great. So that, the, that none is like it is even the time of Jacob's trouble. But he, the 144,000 Jews that are sealed, are guaranteed. He shall be saved out of it. It's a guarantee. It's a promise. It's a guarantee. He shall be saved out of it. Who's the he? They try to make that the body of Christ. It's not the body of Christ. The body of Christ isn't here. It's not the saints in the time of Jacob's trouble like the Gentiles and the, the Jews that aren't sealed. It's the 144,000 that are sealed. He shall be saved. It's a guarantee. Those 144,000 have a seal. They're guaranteed to get saved, but they have to be protected and watched out for throughout the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay. So, brothers, this is Christ, once again, why? Why? Why would they change the title? Because they're trying to mess up the Word of God. And you'll still, after all this, you'll still have brethren out there that'll say it's not that big of a deal. It's not that big of a deal, you know, the Great Tribulation, the time of Jacob's trouble. It's not that big of a deal. It's not the words of God that matter. It's the message. Even if the message goes against the Word of God, yeah, if the message goes against the Word of God, it's the message that matters. Yea, hath God said, a better rendering would be. God called at the time of Jacob's trouble and said that he, talking about Israel, shall be saved out of it. But no, 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 we, we're going to just mess that up and make it about the church's trouble. Like I said, the first thing they do is they have to destroy dispensational lines. They have to destroy dispensational lines and that, they're working overtime on it. And what Satan has done is he's infiltrated Bible believers and... You can have a great men of God that sit there and say, I believe that we get caught up before that seven-year time period. And they call it the Great Tribulation. But they're promoting Satanism by calling it the Great Tribulation. They're promoting falsehood by calling it the Great Tribulation. They're still being used as Satan. They still have that disease of, yea, if God said, even if you believe that you're not going through that seven-year time period, you need to be calling that seven-year time period what God calls it, the time of Jacob's trouble. I mean, that, you don't even, Brother Jesus Christ, I'm sorry, it's just, you don't even have to go into a huge debate. Okay, remember, debating the word of God, absolute truth, that is a sin. Debating thy cause with thy neighbor when it comes to world issues, you know, where my land ends and yours starts, or where your land ends and mine starts, and we're kind of having a disagreement on it, go debate thy cause with thy neighbor. When it comes to the word of God, Paul talked uh, debating among sins, okay, when it comes to the word of God. 
But when someone comes to you and says, it's for the church, all you have to say is, is what is that seven-year time period actually called? The time of Jacob's trouble. And it says, he shall be saved out of it. Not the body of Christ, not the bride of Christ. He, Jacob. Jacob is Israel. And that should end it for someone who's a Bible believer. Now, the Bible believers, more than anything, these studies, Brothers of Christ, is for Bible believers, like myself, that we've gotten infected with that disease of, yea, hath God said, a better rendering would be. And we're, I'm trying to help us get, in these last days, I believe Jesus has come back any day now. I need to work harder and live better, I'm always working on it, as if Jesus Christ could come back any day. And, Brothers of Christ, we need to get back to saying things God's way. We need to get back to doing things God's way. We need to get back to saying things God's way. We need to start, when we say this book is perfect from cover to cover, we need to actually act like it. Our deeds need to back up those words. Peter Ruckman failed this. Brian Denlinger failed this. Philip Newton failed this. Um, Sam Gipp failed this. David Daniels failed this. 33rd book failed this. I'm listening to all the guys that taught, great men of God, that taught me a lot about the Bible, the Bible version issue, and doctrines in the Bible, and, and, and absolute truth. Every last one of them, this is God's Word, it's perfect from cover to cover. Every one of us is guilty of one time adding to the Scriptures and subtracting from the Scriptures. You're either doing it through respect of persons and being a PWC. Do you remember what a PWC is, Brothers of Christ? I haven't said that in a while, but PWC, Polly won a cracker. I just parrot what he said because it sounded good. And he's a great man of God. He seems to know his stuff. He, he just sounds good, so I'm going to parrot what he said. And then when I get called out, chapter and verse where that's actually in the Bible, when I start looking, I realize I just passed on something false because I didn't take the time to read it and study it for myself. But this is Christ. You need to read and study. All you post-tribbers out there and mid-tribbers, you need to study it for yourself and you need to be dispensational. Okay, you already are if you believe there's an Old Testament and a New Testament. Why aren't you doing animal sacrifices? Well, because we're in the New Testament. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. That's the dispensation. Old Testament dispensation, New Testament dispensation. But they're trying to act like there's no dispensation. This is Christ. Get back to the Word of God and don't be deceived. The Great Tribulation is not a title for that time period. And the reason they change it is they're trying to make the body of Christ go through it. And all these fakes and frauds out there, they will go through the time of Jacob's trouble. And they, uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, I think it is, where, they, where God's going to send them strong delusion. They refuse to get saved today. They refuse to believe the word of God today. And they have a false profession of faith. And they have the knowledge of Jesus Christ and what he went through on the cross. But they don't have the faith. You can't have the faith if you skip repentance. Okay? You, can't, you don't have the faith if there's no evidence of salvation afterwards. You didn't have the faith. You just have the knowledge. They're going to go into that time period. And they've been taught it's the great tribulation and the body of Christ goes through it and you're still sealed into the day of redemption when you're not. They go into that time period, they're going to have that strong delusion that they should believe a lie. And when... The, that man of sin sets up there and claims to be Jesus. A lot of them are going to buy into it hook, line, and sinker. Hook, line, and sinker. What can we do today? We can just be a light while we're here. And when God calls the body of Christ, notice what Paul said for tribulation. The body of Christ is here to encourage one another and help us each other through tribulation. You know what's hurtful, hard and hurtful today is a lot of the body of Christ, everyone seems to be every man for himself in these last days with the falling away. It seems like every man's acting, it's like every man for himself. We tend to purposely, it's not that God's saying, hey, I'm separating you guys out to preach the gospel and be a light, and when the catching away happens, the whole world gets to see it because we're spread out, getting ready to go home. It's not God. A lot of times, I believe, over half our separation from one another is because of us. We're doing it to ourselves. Okay? It's that simple. It's a whole other study, but it's just that simple. We're purposely going off, doing our own thing, and it's like every man for himself. But Paul talks about tribulation, that you, you're there to encourage one another and help each other and be a, a, an example and an exhortation, as the Bible says, for one another. The body of Christ leaves, that's gone. You're going to have people that are just fighting to endure to the end to be saved. It's not the great tribulation, it's the time of Jacob's trouble. And I can keep going on and on, I forgive my babbling. 
very weak in these last uh, few weeks, been under the weather. So, brothers and sisters Christ, please, please, take this with exhortation. Make sure you're saying things God's way. And I'm telling you right now, in these studies, every time I'm realizing, why do they say it some way else, some, some other way? Why do they change it from how God said it? Because they have a hidden agenda. And that number one hidden agenda, I'm realizing, is trying to make the body of Christ go into the time of Jacob's trouble. That Antichrist spirit is in the world today and it's preparing all these fake Christians, these false Christians that don't line up with the true Christian of the King James Bible, these false converts, these false religions that have a profession, uh, they, they profess a Jesus Christ, they profess a gospel, they profess a spirit, but that spirit ain't the Holy Spirit. It's preparing them to go into the time of Jacob's trouble. It's preparing them for the uh, man of sin, the son of perdition. To take the mark of the beast. They're all prepared to take the mark of the beast. Most of them would. They can say they wouldn't, but I'm telling you right now, most of them would flat out take the mark and worship the beast. I just did it for food, and I'm sealed into the day of redemption, so I, 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 it's okay. I, I gave in and did it just for food, but I'm still saved. No, you're not. No, you're not. So I'll end this with grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and my love for you which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your exhortation and encouragement. And I will see you in the next study.